Computer is not a device anymore. It is an extension of your mind and your gateway to other people. A quote by Mark Shuttleworth. Good evening and welcome everyone. Today we are starting with our last event of the amazing series, Skills of September, which is an IEEE SFIT and IEEE APSIT event. That is Open CV Computer Vision. Our speaker for today's event is Mr. Yeram Barun. He's a deep learning enthusiast and also a research intern at Shubu University in Japan. During the session, please keep your mics and videos off. And if you have any questions or doubts in between the session, please mention them down in the chat box. I now hand over to our speaker. Thank you, Stephen, for the introduction. So hello everyone, welcome to this workshop on OpenCV. I'm sure you all are uh, really excited to learn what's going on and what will go up in OpenCV. So before we get started, I would like to thank APSIT and SSIT team to, for calling me and giving me this chance to tell about OpenCV and etc. Now, the first question that you might be thinking when before coming here is what is OpenCV? Now, uh, OpenCV, as the name suggests, is the open source computer vision library. Now, I'm throwing a lot of words here. Now, what are these? You'll slowly learn them as we go along. So, once again, welcome to this workshop. So, a small introduction about me. I'm a third year at IIT at Guwahati. I've done uh, two internships, one at Chugu University, Japan, two as a research intern and another uh, and deep learning internet reaching UX company. Both involved heavy use of image processing, computer vision and OpenCV2. So I'm going to tell you everything I learned while doing those internships and everything I learned along with. So let's get started. So I think you must have seen in the poster what are the things that we are going to cover. We'll just briefly see what is an image. You might be thinking, you know, what is an image, but let's get ready to change your understanding here images image might be different from what you think of some basic functionality of OpenCV. what it is you'll see how can you edit images like you see memes etc how they are edited you can do edits like that you learn what are contours you you will learn how to find out edges you'll find out how to find corners you'll also do something cool like face detection and image also in the end we'll see a couple of projects that will show what you can do with OpenCV. Okay. So before everything, as I told, uh, OpenCV is an open source computer vision library. Now, what is computer vision? Computer vision is just the vision of a computer, if you put it bluntly. But it's basically uh, a technique to deal with images and how does a computer perceive an image? It Computers do not have eyes like us. So it, processes and does everything with images different. So you have to, it's a very different thing to understand. And where exactly is computer vision used? It's used in a lot of uh, cool research applications like face recognition you see, it is a product of computer vision and OpenCV is used extensively in that. You, It's also used in object recognition, like given any image you recognize objects in it. You do pose estimation of humans and animals, a lot of stuff. Like you detect these sticks where what is the pose of the human currently you also do gesture detection in which you given a hand gesture you can find out what is the number represented there like you can see three you can see a 10 you can see a nine you can do a lot of different stuff with that so all this is a combination of computer vision open cv and deep learning etc so open cv is a very important part you need to understand before doing any of this stuff like this so if you're interested in any of this uh, it's very important that you know what's open cv and what it does so as i told computer vision then what is image processing image processing is the basic internal details of computer vision and everything we do with image so as the name suggests the processing of images is what's image processing now how do you process the process thing is what you need to understand uh, you do a lot of processing, like you can translate images, like you can shift the images a little, 
you can scale them that is maybe resize them bigger you must have done a lot of resizing etc you rotate the images you would give a shear there's a rotation along image plane you reflect those you can do a lot of different processes with images and all these different processes are what constitutes image processing it's a study of that you have a lot you have a small thing called filter that you use in image processing we'll see what it does and how it functions too now right now all this must be very big for you now that's why we have open cv open cv does all these internal mathematics that you see it does open cv does that for you so that you don't have to uh, dirty your hands much so it helps you a lot so all these uh, matrices i think you understand matrices right so image the study of images is a lot like study of matrices there are a lot of matrices there's a lot of mathematics involved so open cv handles all of it for you it provides you tools and functions to do that so let's see what does open cv do so what does open cv do it works on images it has everything related to images so first thing you need to understand is what is an image exactly now there are generally two types of images you have an, an analog image and you also have a digital image an analog image is a continuous image like you see in uh, medical images that you see black and white scans etc but digital images are images that you see on computer they can be broken down into small elements and the smallest element of that image is called a pixel i think you know what a you must have heard pixel at least once like this image is 360 pixels wide and 250 pixels width and height you must have heard that now what was a pixel pixel here is the smallest unit of the image of the digital image basically and digital image further can be of two types grayscale and rgb rgb is also known as color image pretty sure uh, all of you must have heard about grayscale and rgb image at least once now this is an example of grayscale image you have a black and white image every pixel that you see here now what is the pixel smallest unit every small small bit of the image is a shade of gray you can see it can either be small uh, white or it can either be completely black so it's in between that all of the all the other pixels are in between that now as i told you small bits of an image now this image is very big what what happens if you zoom this image a lot if you zoom it a lot you might see something like this now this this square that you see individual square is a pixel and you can't see a square here because it's a, it has a lot of pixels and you can't you have to zoom it a bit now in case you zoom a pixel a bit you'll see something like this you won't see the numbers but you'll see the colors now a grayscale image is nothing but an image which represents an intensity between white and black you can either have a very low intensity of color which is called black or very high intensity which is white so you can see that uh, you can see all the numbers like the 6 6 is the intensity of the color the intensity is uh, is ranges between 0 to 255 we'll see uh, how it works and everything hands on pretty soon so You can see that everything ranges from zero to two fifty five. So, a high number means a whiter color, and a low number means more darker color. So, you can see that high. Uh, these are these numbers are very large, and hence they are very white in color. And these numbers are very low. So, this is black in color. Now, how does the computer see it? A computer sees it like this. It just sees it like a matrix of numbers, just plain numbers. we understand we have given the notation that a high number means a white and low number means black but for the computer it's all numbers computers machines everything operates in numbers so we have to design techniques so that computers understand what are those numbers now what is a color image now simply say you add color to a black and white image you get a color image now now exactly how do you add that color here you can see every pixel is represented by a single number right for example this pixel has a number 211 and for a color image you also need to have the information of color so if you have uh, just uh, putting it out there if you have any doubt or anything you are anything you want to ask you can put it in the chat box and uh, i'll get back to you right anything in between you can put it so a uh, color image is basically you add the you add color to a black and white image right so a color image needs to represent needs to make sense of those numbers now you have you had the numbers here 
you had the numbers here every single number represents a range between black to white now here to every color number that you put need to have an information and how is that information understood by the computer is with color models now what are these color models basically two types rgb and hsv there are a lot of other types you can uh, research on your own later but these are the basic ones that are used so rgb and hsv are the basic color models that you have so let's see what is rgb now rgb is i think you might have guessed already it's red green and blue so every color can be represented in the form of these three colors A ratio of these three colors can form any color so that's the way in which computers operate so every image every pixel every pixel of the image has three numbers associated with it and a red value a green value and a blue value by combining these three values it can get the color of the pixel for example this is a pixel okay its red value is 255 green value is 0 and blue value is 0 so it does not have any green and blue so the only color it has red so hence it is in red in color for example this it has red green and blue values as this so i think you can guess why so blue blue represents blue color and green similarly now interesting things uh, are this like here look you have a red 255 blue to a green 255 and blue zero so a combination of red and green produces yellow which matches the common thing that see and a combination of green and blue forms sand color so that is also something to notice now you can see if you put all zeros you have two color and no color means black and if you put all to verify get white you must have heard the popular thing like if you combine all the colors you get white right have a have a play wheel to spin it fast has different colors that will turn to white So in this way, if you put two bit by two everything, you get white color. So in this way, you can understand how every pixel, every combination of three values can produce a different color. If you want to, yeah, let's see more. So this cube can uh, is a similar thing. A blue increases, red increases, and green increases. So you can have a range of colors here. So as I said, every pixel has three values. So you can assume an image to be made up of three layers. a red layer which has all the a red layer which has all the red color values a green layer which has all the green color values and a blue layer which has all the blue color values. so when you put them on top of the other so every point will have these three values right you can see in the across into the screen you can see three values suppose this pixel have this value this value and this one you have three values a red green and blue so it will have its unique color so all this is a zoomed version of this image so you can see this whole image has three layers now every layer in the image is called a channel so an rgb color image has three channels and can you guess what, what is the number of channels in a grayscale image you can put it in the chat now rgb image has three channels so what will be the number of channels in a grayscale image? yes uh, one one is the correct answer so as uh, as i said every pixel has only one value so it has only one layer so obviously it will have only one channel and three layers means three channels you can you also have a four channel color model which you can search later you can always search for them it's very common now before going to hsp uh, if what if you want to see more about uh, learn more about how, what are these colors etc This is small. You can search RGB color picker. It's a Google, the Google provided thing. When you search it, you'll get this. You can vary the colors as much as you want and get the RGB color values. For example, I go to somewhere green. You can see that green value is very high when compared to red. So it's a very green color. You can see when I put a somewhere, you can get different colors. You can see the black color has very low value, so it has almost no color. should be somewhere pure black somewhere should be along here and here it is white in colors so all the values are very high so the maximum value you have is 255 set that and so you can have a, you can pick any color 
So you can see CMYK is another color space. You can just search about it. It has four channels. HSV is what it's trading at. HSL and hex codes are beyond the scope, but they are also color spaces. So let's continue. This was RGB. The next color model you have is HSV. This is also a pretty interesting model, useful model for OpenCV images. I'll tell you how is it how it is used. So HSV model, as you saw in the RGB, it has an R value, a G value, and a B value for every pixel. So similarly, HSV has three values, a Q value, a saturation value, and a value, values value. So what are these three things? Now hue is the color portion of the color model. Go front. Yeah. So hue. So this is the color model. As you saw before, RGB can be represented as a cube, but HSV is represented as cylinder. Because hue is an angle ranging from 0 to 360. It does a full circle. It's so just it's taken apart a little to for visualization. Now you can see here hue varies from 0 to 360. For every angle of hue, you have a different color. Right? So these are the actual values, not same. So 0 to 60 hue value means it's a red in color. 60 to 120 becomes a yellow color. Now, if you specify the color like this, what is the use of saturation value? Saturation tells you the amount of grayness in the color, how much it is faded, and what is the saturation, basically. When you, when you talk about saturation in image, this is what uh, kind of it is referred to amount of grayness in the image. You can see as you increase the saturation, the color becomes more better visible and less grayer. And when you almost put it zero, it becomes almost white, right? So that's what is saturation. And what is the value? Value is the brightness of the color. How bright is it? It ranges from zero to 100. So zero is, means it's, oh, it's not bright at all. So it's black. And 100 is it's the brightest. And what is the brightest thing you can have? The original color that is set by the hue. So if, if you're finding it hard to understand what is the original color, you can see the value here. Value is written here. Let's see. So value is written here. The value is the height. Now, if value is zero, you can see the bottom portion of this color wheel is completely black because it has zero value. So whatever hue, whatever saturation you put, if you give a value of zero, the color will be almost black. And if you put the value of one, the proper complete complete color. It will reveal the complete color. You can see as you go high, as you go high, the color becomes more brighter. The color becomes more bright. So this is very light color and becomes bright color. So in this way, hue, saturation, and value have. So as you learned about images, you learned about color models. Let us see how do they actually work with? How do they actually happen? So for that, uh, I'll show you a notebook which I have written on Kaggle. I am not sure if you have heard, but I will show you how what it is. Kaggle is basically a platform where you can run any code. Now, OpenCV is basically a library which provides you all the tools. And the tools are written in a programming language called Python. And Kaggle is a way, place where you can run all Python notebooks, etc. So I'll share you the link and tell you how to access it or run it for yourself. So I'll put the link in chat. So please open that. And then I'll tell you how to proceed from there. Sorry, I'll send it. Okay. So please open it. I think you must, and you might be asked to sign in. Okay. So once you are signed you can sign in with google i am sure everyone everyone must have a google account and once you're signed in you will see something like this when you're on this page uh, put it in the chat box should be seeing something like this you'll see your profile picture you can see again. you might have a green color here So everyone is requested to do that because whatever I do, you can do it yourself. You can make changes or you can do anything you want by yourself. So it'll be pretty fun. So please. Hmm. 
there was anyone able to open this Great, you can just open the link and after opening, you can just click on this copy and edit. Just click on that, nothing else. If you just click on that, if you're doing it late, you can just remember. Once open, just click on copy and edit, nothing else. And then you can click on this start session. It will, it will give you a computer to run the code on. Now this Kaggle takes your code and runs it on its own computer. So this is the best thing you can test you can, if you don't want to mess up your computer before testing anything. So you can just uh, connect to a computer with Kaggle and do whatever you want. So it will give you a draft session starting. Once you have that, so it gives you some CPU, it gives you a RAM, a disk space, everything. So once you have the green in here, you are all set to do it. So I request everyone to do that. I mean, if you're doing it on system, you might have to install OpenCV and everything, but Kaggle has everything pre-installed. So it's very useful. You don't, you didn't have to do much work before session. So if it shows green, at least to one person, you can ping it in the chat that you got green in color. Has started. Great. The green color means it has started and connected. So you can start working. So a lot of you might be new to Python and programming language. So I'll just explain you the basics of how everything is working and then you can explore on your own. So ignore the first set. So the, the main thing that I'll be using here is a function. Now a function is a chin. Hello? Yeah, okay. So you must okay, let me repeat okay you must have uh it will be opened like this as soon as you open the link you might have to sign you can sign in with google or you don't need to set up an account i can sign in with google and then you'll get a copy and edit here you can see 21 of you have copied but anyway so you can see a copy and edit here uh, instead of once you make a copy you'll see edit my copy but first you'll see a copy and edit here and as soon as you click it you get an editor loaded. You'll get a gray color that your session is off. And once you click it, you'll get this orange color that's getting started. So I think that was good. Yeah. So the basic thing I'll be using in Python is what's called a function. Now, function is like a magic machine, simply said it does something for you inside it and just gives you the output that you can use so that with which you can do anything you want so i have written these magic machines and kept it here i will explain you as we go uh, what i have written as a little later in the presentation but right now you can just think of it as magic and uh, see what's happening right so to end to execute or to run this you have to put the cursor here and you can just click enter or you can just put a shift and enter, right? This is how you run that. It's, oh, it's important that you run these machines before you do the actual thing, right? Because without machines, how will you get, how will you work? So you just put a shift and enter, or you can just directly enter here, or you can click here. Don't put run out, just put this, just run this cell. So all your code, all your, land, all your programming language code is distributed in cells. So you'll run this cell and you'll next you'll run another cell. So I'm running this cell. If you have any doubt what I'm doing, it doesn't make sense. So I'm doing something, just put it in the chat, right? Okay. 
So here I'll show you, you can, uh, re I'll read a sample image with which we can do things. So how am I reading this? I'll, uh, I'll tell you a few slides later. But right now, just think of it as magically, I am getting a sample gray image, a random gray image I'll get, and I'll store it in the name, and I'm store it in a variable. If you don't understand variable, variable is just a container that holds your image or whatever you give it. So now I'm holding my image, this IMG, and then I'm printing. Print means it's just output the shape and image dot shape is how you access the shape of the image. So I'll just run it and you'll see that the sample image that I obtained has a size 190,265. So how does OpenCV work? It works like rows comma columns it gives you the rows now rows of an image is basically height right and the columns of an image number of columns of an image is width you can visualize it very easily like if this is a an image the rows are this the number of rows will give you the height of the image so now let's see what is the image now this is your image that it has randomly loaded you can see that it also gives you a grid you can see 190 size and you can see a 260 size. So that is the size of the image. Now, let us see a small part of the image. Now, what if I want just a small part in the image? How you'll access individual pixel, right? Now, how are these pixels distributed? Now, OpenCV follows a coordinate system. Mm, coordinate system is really basic. So you have an origin with, with from which you can reference all your points. Your origin is right here. Top left corner is your origin. And this is your x-axis and this is your y. -axis. So suppose I want to access this particular pixel, I'll just give it x comma y value. Now x value is this, the uh, this length, and y value is this length. Now, how do I select an open CV? How does it allow? Basically, you first give the x coordinates from what x coordinate to which x coordinate. So I'm telling it that I want from zero to x coordinate. To 10th x coordinate i want everything and y coordinate also same from 0 to y coordinate to 10th y coordinate i want this so basically we'll just extract a small place from here so let us extract and show see see this this is the small part that you have extracted from here see this cloud and this small black thing it has amplified so as i showed you in the earlier in the presentation right you when you zoom it you'll get small small squares and everything so that's how is individual pixel when you zoom it this is how you see. Now, as I told you, what are these pixels? How does computer see it? It sees that are numbers. So this is what the numbers are. So these are the numbers corresponding to each pixel. You can see, uh, if you just take a glance, quick glance, you can see this, these are the maximum values you have. 150, everything is below 150. So here is the maximum color, most color you have here. Rest all are dark. And this is the least color, right? So this, it must have very low value. And right, it has very low values, right? It's pretty uh, connected. Same thing, the number tells you the color. So let us save the color images now. Now I'm just reading the image from a path. I have a path, Kaggle divided path. The path can be anything. It can, uh, in your computer, if you do it on computer, you can have something like, like a C users, something, something, uh, something, something dot image can have something like this. This can be the path of an image as well, right? So you read the image from a path. This is also magic right now, but you'll see how does OpenCV read an image shortly. So I'll read a color image and just put it and show you. So right. So now first thing that you notice is the three here. What you said, the number of channels in grayscale is one, right? You just have a one matrix. Here, the size is 168,3, three times. So you have three layers, each of 168,300 size. You can see 168,300 size. So it has three channels, RGB image. And once again, I want a small part of it. So I'll extract, you can see 100,110 is the X coordinate. So I'll take the 100 coordinate somewhere here, right? Somewhere here. And Y coordinate is 0 to 10. So somewhere here. So this small part from somewhere here is extracted and seen. This is a small part. You can see it's still color image. Now, in the grayscale part, you just uh, took this small part and saw you just saw numbers, right? Just saw plain numbers. Now, let us see what this small part contains. 
it doesn't contain just numbers it has three three values every pixel has three values with it you can see that now one warning here you just learned about rgb means right now open cv doesn't work with rgb means it works with bgre it works with all the values are reversed in order it was made that way at that time so the values that you see are actually bgr colors okay so blue values 9470s the green value in red just reversed order so these are the bgr values of every pixel every pixel is a 33 values now let us see the blue values for that i'll take all now colon means you select all the rows all the dimension all the access, complete axis so i'll select all the rows all the columns and zero the channel the first channel the first channel as i said open the works with blue values so it's a blue channel so these are the blue values of the image and similarly the green values can be accessed by one i'm just doing shift plus enter to run you can do that similarly in your notebook and you'll see the same numbers right so one can even do anything you want a small part one means first channel and two means red channel and one thing you notice is all the counting begins from zero and that's how every, most programming languages work and all the counting starts from zero now let us see hsv part now i have this small part here right this small block of this now i'll convert this rgb to hsv so how am i converting this we'll see later or we'll see later how exactly but right now i'm just giving it to my machine convert to hsv which does the magic and gives you a small part in hsv form and in the hsv form i want to see first channel the first channel is hue right so yeah this is hue right now this is hue now what what do you notice here you notice that all the values are very same everything is 97 to 100 somewhere between that now why what did hue represent it represent the primary color representation the primary color here is blue right all the colors are some shade of blue Something near to blue, some shade of blue. So since the color is same, the hue value are almost same, right? The hue is very strongly related to color. So that's why HSV values is used. The hue value and saturation and value all represent color very well. Saturation, you can see saturation values as well. You can see that these are very small when compared to all the others. Now, what is why are they small? Let us see. Yeah, you can see that they have very low saturation. It's lighter, right? And they are very dark. Yeah, faded. This is very faded and it's not faded. That's why those values are. Blue. You can see the value values. This also you can see. So the small H S V also contains three channels. H S V is always three channel because that three messages. Now let us see what what does you can see offer. So as is of we. images and everything now what is a video now once you understand images right video is almost done video is just a collection representation of moving images that you have right you show videos you show images continuously and you have a video so in this way you can represent a video now as you might uh, really be familiar with like 15 is a very known value any object you should show images continuously right if you have it less than 15 frames per second you won't see it moving it's a pretty known fact and that is something called frame rate the number of frames or images shown per second now 15 is the bare minimum you can have very high like 24 30 60 everything now as is all got a brief understanding of what are images color models etc now you can actually start uh, working with images Before that, if any of you have anything to ask about what's happening and what has happened, everything is going great. Like you are following, right? Just wanted a small feedback. Okay, hue. Right. So hue is basically as I told, it encodes the color in the image. Let us go there. Okay. 
hue represents the primary color of this now what is hue the angle in this cylinder a zero angle has a blue color right all the shades of blue are present in this reach this angle if you increase the angle a little more you reach here right pink all the shades of pink that you can think of are present in this this hue angle now if depending on saturation value you can have very big range of colors say yellow you have a specific angle of you you get the yellow color now yellow has a lot of shades how you get those shades you get with the change in the saturation value so every saturation value with the specific you will produce a different range different shade of the color so you encode the color of the you so let's see that here great so if you're okay um if you move on again i always put it here okay right so once again as you saw we'll it's a library that deals with images it has a lot of different applications like you have do facial recognition you can do live recording you can edit photos using that you can do optical character recognition what does that mean you can see the text you can take the photo of the text and find what is the text in that it's a fixed choice the what hue color represents a, a what hue number represents okay here is a question if you just see in the chat box well, the fact that each range represents a certain color is a selection matter or a matter of the which hue number which represents which color is a fixed matter and that's how the computer understand because as you saw before the color picker you have you have hsv values also right see as i'm changing the color you can see the angle is changing right you can see this hue hue is the angle so as i'm changing the angle increases to 360 and angle from zero so i'm changing the angle i get different colors now which angle represents which color is uniform it is fixed like you have 1 meter to 100 cm it's a standard unit standardly fixed that's how different computers can understand you give a random color you don't need to specify which color so yeah it's a very good representation of everything here well now if now i can change uh now as i'm changing this circle i'm changing the saturation and value you can see this percentages are changing but the hue remains same you can see it's 240 degrees on 243 degrees you can have white or black in there so the angle represents the shade that you look at you can just play with it for some time you'll understand what i'm talking about it is a very good thing you can work with the right so i think is it clear so so an important function like since you are working with images of okay before that right? so we have a optical character recognition as i was talking about you have a lot of apps right recently you just put your uh, put the camera and it read the text for you how is it working it, that's ocr optical character recognition that's how it works and it'll be using python as a programming languages program language I'm also using other libraries like NumPy, Matplotlib, SciPy, but those are part of the magic right now. So they are beyond the scope of this. Right now, uh, just know that OpenCV's Python library is what I'm using. OpenCV was originally written in C++, but Python bindings are provided to make it easy to understand. Python is very easy to understand. Right. So as I'm working with images, now uh, the first thing you do is read an image, right? Now, how do you read an image? so open cv provides a function called i am read how won't explain function i think it's pretty clear so cv i am read is a function that takes an input and gives the output the image that you want now what are the inputs that you can give either you can give the image name right messy file or jpeg or you can give the image path like and this you have the path you use a desktop messy or jpg but the first argument is the path of the image or you can give a link the hosting or the link from where we can read the image 
first is the image or location and second is a flag now what is this flag the flag is to tell the open city what are you reading are you reading a color image or a grayscale image? generally open city is smart enough to understand but if you have trust issues or you don't understand you don't believe open city will understand you can just give that flag zero means uh, it will read a grayscale image and if you put a one thing it will read a color image so in this you can tell it uh, open city what kind of image it is reading okay right now you have read the image how will you show it you will use seem to read i'm show this function just shows the image it opens a new window to which you can give the name the first argument is the window name and second is the name of the image in this way you can show them now uh, you took an image you did everything you wanted to you wrote something on it you create the meme out of it everything now how to save it use the cv2 dot am right function it saves the image so is the first is the name that you want to give and second is the argument in that also give the path here where you want to save it and second is the image itself and what do you mean image itself it's a variable that has the image right there are two more useful functions you have is cv2 wait key this function basically hangs the program for a specified time like you give the argument suppose i put cv2 wait key 10 it will wait till 10 milliseconds and it will wait till i hit a random key right you get that thing right press any key something like this you something like this is used for that you hang the program wait for any key to press also you have cv2 destroy all windows it does pretty much what it says it destroys all the windows that you create and by you create the windows this cv2 i am sure function opens a new window right now suppose you have a video you're showing it frame by frame you show a frame and show again the frame it will create a lot of windows and yeah, you want to close all destroy all so you'll just use this function to destroy all the windows that open cv has created now you've seen this now let's see what's up with the videos now open cv provides a very good uh, api for video now video as i told is a frame by frame you read the image or you read one frame at a time from your camera and you present it as a video now you can directly either give .mp4 file or that .mvi files for any video file you can give OpenCV and it will provide an object to take the frames. If you can also give zero, it will use a direct laptop webcam that you have, PC webcam you have, which I'm currently using like to see that I attach. Or if you want to use an external camera, you can also give one, right? If you have more, you can give two, etc. You can just set it down. Now, yeah, here is one very important function that I have used this now. Now, if you want to convert from one model to another, how you will convert? See, this OpenCV provides a very useful function called Civil CVT color. It converts the colors. It takes the image and takes a flag. Now, this flag is very intuitive. You just need to put CVT dot color underscore from what color space to what color space. You have to do that, right? So you just need Suppose you want to convert from BGR, you want to convert it to grayscale. You can just put cv dot color BGR to grayscale. And suppose you want to convert it from BGR to HSV, like what I did right now, right? I use this. I used color this BGR to HSV, right? Let's see, Let's see some of the magic I'm doing. See, this is this was my machine. It took image as the input. It is this. It did this, right? cv dot cv color. It applies the flag BGI to HSV. It returns, and I'm returning. Like the machine will give an output, right? So that is the end. So it converts and gives me back. So in this way, I read the image. Okay, right now, I can understand more of it. Okay. okay. So let us see how you can read the image. Now I'm pretty sure you know cv 2 dot am read. You give the path. Now Kaggle does the pretty other thing, pretty. Different thing with path. You can just give the one because I know it's a color image. So I'll see, I'll read it and show you. So this is the image that I've read just now. And what happens if you put a zero to it? Right. It now it was a color image, but I told OpenCV, I confused it by saying that it is a grayscale image. Now what did it? It took the image and converted it to black and white and gave me the black and white version. So it does what you ask 
market for but sometimes it's it might not be what you're looking for so generally people avoid this argument you can just you can just uh, take out that and you'll get the image it opens it automatically chooses the flag for it's very neat now you can all also convert it to black and white i took this dhr and i can convert it like cvt.cvt color i just choose a flag and convert great now open cv also has a flag called cv2 dot color bgr to rgb also has that but i say we don't need it we can do it directly we don't need a special flag we don't need a function don't need a machine to convert from bgr to rgb it's pretty simple why am i saying that what's a very easy way to convert from bgr to rgb anyway like what is the difference between bgr and rgb Like you just have a BGR image and you want to make it RGB. Now, RGB is just the reverse order of BGR. So if you have three channels of the image, you just reverse them. What did you get? What RGB, right? Have a BGR image, you reverse its channel, what RGB? So that's why that's why it's pretty easy to convert. I think I'm sure you mentioned visit it somewhere, but yeah. Then this way you can convert it. Okay, so once image is done, let's see the very interesting thing like transforming images. You can change images as you want. You have, right now you have read the image, right? You learned how to read the image, how to save it. Now, what will you be doing with it? You'll doing transformations. The first transformation we have is scaling. Scaling is nothing but resizing of the image. You have a function called cv2.resize for that. Okay, so now, as I told you, it's function, it will take some inputs. And what are these inputs? The inputs are the image, the main image that you have. You have the destination size. Right? What is the size that you want? Right? Now, sometimes you don't have the size. You know how much I want to expand it. And I want to make this image two times than what it is. Then I don't know what's the size. I just have to scale how much that I want to increase it. So that's when you give FX or FY. Fx is how much you want to increase it in x axis, and Fy is how much you want to increase in the y axis. Now you can't give both of them; you give an error. So either you can give the size that you have, or you can give the scales. Also, you have one more thing called interpolation. To understand what's interpolation, you need to understand what exactly scaling. Scaling is as I told, resizing. What it does, it has a bigger image. You can calculate a smaller version of it. It's all calculation, it's all mathematics inside. It calculates a smaller version of the image. Now, there are various ways for calculating the resizing. Either you can use an inter, you can use an area, you can use area, take the average and put the average value in that area. Or you can use a cubic formula, so cubic formula that's inbuilt, or you can use a bilinear, a linear formula. So this works by default. There's a linear formula for calculating the size. So generally, don't have to worry about that. That's why OpenCV is for. It calculates everything for you without even worrying about that. So this is a uh, this is an example how you can resize the image. Image you have you don't know the size, but you know you want to make the image two times. So just put two and two, and it'll, uh, you don't need to give it. It'll automatically uh, choose a default for you. So either you can give the FX or you can give the size that you have. You want two times the width or two times the height. So that's how we can scale the images. Next thing you have is the translation of the image. Now, what is the translation? Just shift the image. Now, shift, you shift the image a little. Now, as I told, this is your x axis horizontally, and this is your y axis. So, this image is shifted both in x and y axis, right? You can see that. 
Now, to translate an object, we need to define a matrix. Our transformation matrix is something like this. It takes M, has 1, 0, 0, 1, and Tx and Ty. What are these Tx and Ty? They are the shifts. So suppose this uh, is like 30 pixels. So I want to say I want 30 pixels to the right and around 20 pixels to the bottom. I want to shift the image like this. So I'll give like 30 or 20. So that will be the matrix. So this matrix, you give it to, you give it to warp or fine. It will apply this matrix on the image and give you the final output. Rotation is also a very similar thing you do. You define a matrix, you define a rotation matrix. If you have a thing you have over there, but it's a rotation matrix, simply you rotate a vector, you rotate everything, you need a rotation matrix, right? So here's how it's defined. Like, suppose this is a messy image that we were talking about a few steps back, the grayscale image. So you want to rotate it. It's rotated 90 degrees, right? Anti clockwise. So since it's rotated, you define the angle like that and you get the matrix. Now you have to calculate cost, sign, everything. So instead of you calculating that, that OpenCV does it for you again. So OpenCV does a lot of things for you. It provides a function called get rotation matrix. It, it, it just takes the angle you want to rotate and about what point you want to rotate. Like I want to rotate about center. I want to rotate about this point. Want to rotate about this point, like there are various points about which you can rotate. So yeah. So once you are done with rotation, you can similarly apply that to warp of fine. Warp of fine applies the matrix on the image. So next we'll see how to draw on the images. So this is also pretty intuitive thing. OpenCV provides a lot of functions for it. So how are you going to draw? So these are some shapes that you can draw on the image. You can draw a line. You can draw a square or a rectangle, you can draw a circle, you can draw an ellipse. Now, how do you draw a line? Just have a function called cv2.line. You give the image to the start point. Now, this is the start point, suppose. So, how do you mention the point? You give the x coordinate and you give y coordinate from the coordinate axis that I just told you. You have a start point, you have end point, then you have color. What color do you want the line? Like, suppose my image is, suppose my image is BGR, okay? BGR. What is the color values of the line? Anyone? Like this is the line. It has a color. And BGR is the color format that I'm following. What will be the color of this line? Color values in BGR values. Yes, that's the so zero zero two whatever because it has no blue, it has no green, it has only red, right? It's a pure red color. So it's zero two fifty five. Now it's something is like even if it's two fifty five or two fifty four, you won't notice much difference because you can't tell that much. But generally, uh, it's right. The uh, basic thinking is what if you are caught, that's what matters. So have this line is in red color. So similarly, you can guess the color of this. You can guess any color. So in this way, you can draw color. So you draw line. Now rectangle, how does, how do you draw a rectangle? Similarly, you give the start point. Here the start point is the top left corner and the end point is the bottom right corner. You give both of these points. Once you have both these points, you can define the rectangle. You can again define color and then thickness. What is the thickness of the rectangle? And also you can have a thickness here line too. Like you want a very thick line, you want a very thin line. Next, how to draw a circle? A circle is, as you might know, it defines uh, it is defined by its center and radius, right? So to draw a circle, you need the center. Center is basically the xy coordinate to the center and the radius of the circle. The radius in pixels, right? Everything is measured in number of pixels. So I want five pixel wide circle, something like that. Again, you have a color, you also have a thickness. Now, as I told thickness here, you can give, I want three pixels wide, I want four pixels wide. But if I put minus one, it will fill it completely. Right, so if you suppose in the draw a rectangle, in the thickness you mention minus one, it will fill the complete rectangle with minus one color. See it shortly, right? That's how you can try, try to draw a polygon, like how to draw a polygon. You can either use lines and make a polygon out of it. You can also have a specified function which you can find, right? Now, next, adding a text to the now text this text has a lot of attributes so. Similarly, say OpenZ provides a function for that. 
you give the image you then give the text that you want to add to the image then you give the org the origin from where you want the text to start so you see the bottom left corner from where it will start writing to the font on what font you want to write it's again open cv based font you have a uh, font hershey simplex font hershey complex font hershey plain have these fonts which you can use then you have font scale which is the font size basically so how big is you want the text have the color again color again is a feature value has a thickness or how big you would want text you can give line type it's not really necessary but the way the lines are drawn while writing so you can give that so as you saw some geometric transformation let's see how do they work in real right so let us see the scaling now i have this image right 40 million work so i have taken this image let us scale this scale it a little i'll just do cv2 dot resize i do the image comma i'll give a random 400 comma 4 right what is the original size it was 3 to the comma 6 600 right i resize it 400 comma 400 Let's see. See, this image is resized. It's basically square. So you can see the axis four hundred comma four. Resizes the image. Then let's do transmitting the image. Now first I'll take the height and width. So height of the image is basically is three hundred comma six hundred, right? So I'll store it in a variable called height comma width, right? And I'll print it to check. And then I'll create a matrix. Suppose I want to shift. 50 pixels towards the right for the x axis and 60 pixels towards down by con so positive and negative i think you can understand that right positive means right and negative means it will move to left but suppose i want to move to right and move to left move to move down right so 50 and 60 so let us see the matrix so in opencv and numpy numpy is another library that handles matrices and numbers and everything for you so i define this matrix 1050 This is my matrix. Right? Now I'll apply the translation of the image. Let us see. Right? How am I applying? I'm just doing pop up find. I am giving it the matrix that I made that I stored in capital M, and I also am giving it the destination. What is the final size that I'm? I want the same size what I gave it. So I'll just give it the original image size, which are bigger than that. Why bigger than that? Because I stored them there. I stored the original size here. I'll just store it. Now suppose I want to move to left, so I'll just see. I'll put a minus here. Okay, move left towards fifty pixels. Can change it whatever you want. You can change it a little. Uh, you can have a minus here as well. So that's why I'm given. That's why I've given the move for you. Can just run it if you want to try out anything. You can just test. It. How am I running? Once again, I just shift plus enter, or you can just see. I want suppose we both run. You can just put this here and run this. Let's shift left and up, negative direction. So that's it. Let's go ahead. So for rotation also, we'll have that. For rotation, I'll rotate this image by along its center. Okay. So for center, I need to divide the width by two and height by two. But division, you're seeing double slashes. What are these double slashes? So Python provides this double. Suppose you have an odd side, right? When you divide by two, you get Suppose you have five. You when you divide by two, you get two point five. But you don't have two point five pixels, right? Two point five pixels don't exist. Pixel is the smallest unit. Either have one pixel, two pixels. So you take the floor of that. But if you understand the floor operation, you take out the fraction part. So you just have two. So this double slash operator does everything for you. It divides it, and if there is a fraction part, it takes that out. So once I got the center, I define it that I want this center. I want to rotate by thirty degrees, and I don't want to scale it. So, create the matrix for me. So, it creates the matrix for me. So, it rotates by thirty degrees. So, in the formula, I think you saw. Yeah, it's a cos thirty sine thirty, right? You can vary by sine thirty to half, cos thirty root two by two. So, it does everything for you. It does a sine and every calculation. So, once again, I'll just apply the rotation. See, it's rotated by thirty degrees. Send. Right? Any doubts in this portrait? If you're asking, want to try something or please try it. It's for you. If you get an error you're trying, just tell me. I'll, I'll solve that for you too. Okay, let's see the drawing. 
now before drawing let's see how can i make an image now a whole agenda for we talked about what is an image it's just a collection of numbers so if i create an image right uh, having numbers it will tell the numbers for us so i want to create a random matrix right i'm not creating a image i'm creating a matrix of 500 size 500 size contains three channels three layers right i'm creating now I'm, now i am making the computers and now i am giving that matrix to the computer and saying whatever you understand show it to me so this is what it shows so this is a complete matrix of zeros and it is showing this to me so it is understanding it as black so it's fixed zero means a black that's fixed so now now suppose you want to have some other color right what will you do you'll just change the color values right you just you just is the rgb values you know have the super power you understand what is in it suppose i want it to be say uh, white now what is white key? you give 255 you take my original image my original image is stored in any image okay i take the init image and add this array now you might be thinking that image contains a lot of these pixels so how am i just adding this one pixel now numpy that is another library the open three provides a very neat technique where if you give the small pixel small three value vector it will add that to all the pixels now what is 0 plus 255 it's 255 so all the pixels will be 255 see so all the 255 things why i'm asking to be because this my niche vector that i have is everything to be with everything is to be with so when i give that matrix to computer and tell it whatever you see show it to me so it is showing this one now i want a random color i can just go to rgb color paper and i can just select say i want this color i'll just copy this rgb values one thing one caution i told this is a bgr you have to enter it in bgr format so i have 181 i have 88 and 35 this is the color you have say exact color because everyone follows the same rgb convention once you know the rgb values of color you know the color completely right you can again take a random color and check for yourself just take this values and add you might get different you have to uh, take care of the order doesn't give us okay so now let us have a white image so white image is right this is the white image you have now i want to draw, draw a line as i told what does a line contain line i have to give my original image that i have which is white image that i have i'll give it the start point i want to start from 10 comma 10 somewhere here and i want to end it at 400 comma 400 so somewhere here here is where i end so i am expecting a line like this now what color i have given a random color or green color right green color and this is thickness two thickness so let us see what it does so this is what it does 10 comma 10 to 4 comma 4 now since i've given the green color it will draw if you want something different you can just select a random color on the tree to 35 yeah yeah so it will select the color point so whatever color you want you can just try that and you also have the thickness you suppose i want to very very thin, 30 degrees see this very thick line you want a very thin line please so once it makes changes it doesn't back the okay so it's very thin line so whatever you want to draw you can just select it and draw i want to draw a rectangle it's very similar i have image i have the top left corner i have the top bottom right corner i give the color which is red color and the thickness is four let's see this is the rectangle or uh, it draws it's a square yeah but anyway. so then you have the circle you can draw the circle as well give the center to the radius to the color and the thickness right now suppose uh, as i told if i do it to minus one it should fill the complete circle see fill the complete circle now let us see some writing on images now before writing you need to have a font c2 provides a font 
CV to his name would open CV. Provides a font called Hershey Complex that I'm you know always change it to Simplex or anything. Right? There are some predefined fonts. So I'm giving it the image, the text that I want to write, the bot, the origin from where I want to start, the font that I have, the how big I want the writing, and the color. Now this is PG blue and green form something like this. What is blue and green form? Let's see. And you have the thickness. Form sand. So blue and green form sand. So you have this written learning book. Right. Um, yeah. So this was geometric operations and images. I think it's clear. Can just you can just keep trying out your whatever ideas you have, whatever you want to do. Just be crazy and do get an error, don't worry. Yeah. Error is the most common thing that you're gonna get, right? Doesn't always work. So you can just search for it, you get a lot of solutions, or you can if right now you get an error, you can just put it in the chat. Be happy to help. Okay. So once you have written something to images, let's see what you can do with images as a whole, right? You can take the image, you can blur it a little, right? What is blurring? It reduces, it does, it just blurs a little. I think it's a common thing that you know. You can see it in the image as well. The sharpness is removed from the image. So you can just use the CV to blur. It's a common function. You just give the image, it takes the average of the pixel and replaces. If you don't understand it completely, uh, or say don't worry about it right now, because it's mathematics and right now your focus should be on understanding what can open CV do. What are the functionalities it provides? So that if you have any use case, you can just search for it and you know it does that. Yeah. It also has a Gaussian blur. It uses some Gaussian function and it's the blurring. So in this way, you can blur the image. You can see that too. Okay. So once again, I'm reading a sample image. See to it, I'm reading the same open thing. And then I'm blurring. And the blur thing, when you give the image and you also give a size how much big you want to blur at a time a bigger size will blur more so let's see so this five by five blurs it a little suppose i go crazy and give 100 for more 100 i see that's like crazy it does uh it blurs it too much and you won't even understand it. so you can give a very big value also you want so it does that. so if you want to ask anything or then you can move on to the next one. Right then. You can always put it in between two. So, what are contours? Let's see what are contours. Contours is a very useful thing where you suppose you have a black and white image like this. You can find the borders of the image and find the borders of something that you want to represent. If you have this hand, you can just find the borders. So, CV2 opens provides a very useful function called find contours. So if you have this image, it will find this uh, this blue color line for you. It will also draw this line. Now, how it represents this line? It represents this by points. It represents this points on the rectangle spaces. Now, this find contours function has a lot of crazy complex stuff that you don't need to understand it right now. It just provide. It just takes an image. It takes a grayscale image. Takes a black and white image. It takes a takes an approximation method and a hierarchy which are way beyond the scope right now. So it finds the contours of the image and gives you the contours. That's the simple explanation of what it does. Now, what is the contours? It's a list, okay, it's a list of all the contours in the image. Now, each contour is an array. It's an array of the coordinates of the boundary. Like you have this, right? You have this pixel coordinate, this coordinate, this coordinate. They are spaced a little, you have all the points. That's the contour. It opens you also draws the contours for you. Like you have an image, give it the contours, draw this for me. It will draw the contours for you. 
give the image with the contours uh, minus one means draw all the contours that you have uh, or you can give an index like one you want you want to draw the first contour mm -hmm. or you can three you want to the third contour minus one says what is minus one and draw everything draw. you can also uh, give the colors of the contours you want to draw like right now blue in color and give a random color you want also give the thickness okay now why are, why are we talking about this contour what is the use and everything so contours basically are useful in analysis right suppose you have this shape this very crazy shape you don't know what it is but you want to approximate it you you find the contour of it you get something like this then you will tell it to lose some points uh, you lose some points until you are still connected so it will start approximating this contour into some polygon right it can some it can approximate this to a rectangle right so in this way you know that it's some form of rectangle so it is done using uh, an approx polity function which i really encourage you to read about right so that is very useful thing you can also do some also very cool stuff i'll show you in the end with contours and you can also find the area of the contour you can find the perimeter like or how many pixels is there to all sort of analysis. Now let's do this. Let's see what I'm talking about. What are these contours thing? So once again, I'll just read a random image. So let us go to class one and start working with shapes again. So I have these shapes. Now, as I told, contours everything works with black and white. Image. So you will just convert this image from BGR to gray, right? So I'll convert and see again. So you will see a black and white image. Now I will, this is a black and white image. All right. But, but what the OpenSea work with is a binary image. Now what is a binary image? It will, it only has two values. It either has zero or one. Now you want to tell OpenCV that convert curve, like convert this, convert this a bit with these two values. Threshold, like threshold is a very common word, right? You have you give two thresholds you have 200 and 255 mm -hmm. now any value below 250 200 is zero and any value above 200 will become one so i told you that then the maximum value is 255 so after converting like that this is your image right so the image will be converted like this it's a binary image this white thing is zeros uh, ones and this black thing are zeros now let us find contours for these images now the boundaries first find the contours now contours is basically the list right now the length of the list will tell you the number of contours it found five contours now why five contours yeah there's one two three four shapes but five contours one contour is the image border which you can neglect if you don't need it but it always gives you the image border too. you can see a random contour how it is uh, like it has four points since there are four, you can guess that this is the contour of this, right? It has four corners, so it approximates it with just four points. Now let us draw these contours on the image. I am using draw contours. I am drawing minus one because all the contours. I am drawing with this color, EGR color, green, green and red form yellow. I am drawing with yellow color and thickness is three. You can see all the shapes are bordered and you also have an image border. So these are the contours it detects. You can also find the center of the contours. For course, finding the center, I am creating a function uh, or machine again. So this finds the moments. Moments are basically center calculations. So you find the center, and I'm drawing a small circle. So see, uh, what is a point? Point is a circle with zero radius, right? You can look at it like that. So I'm drawing a circle of at this point with very small radius, two pixels, and filling it whole. Right, you can see the small application where CV2 circle is used. CV2 circle can be used to put a point on it. So let me run this. You can see I'm putting the small dots here, center of contours. This dot is the center of this full contour. This dot is the center of this contour. This is this contour, you can see the center. Right. So in this way, you can uh, use contours. Also, there are very good applications. Like the first thing you saw is contours. You can see the if once you have the hand, you have uh, taken the hand out and you find the contour of it, you can count the number of fingers, 
right? It's a very useful thing to gesture detection. Like I showed you in the starting, right? Uh, gesture detection contours are very useful there. Now let us see edge detection. And what is edge detection? You can see it, right? Suppose this is an image, you find the edges from it. So these are all the edges you have in the image. Now they are, I think edges is pretty intuitive, whatever you think. Edges is just the lines or boundaries of everything, right? Now, the pretty common thing, the uh, very popular edge detection technique is canny edge detection. It has a very extensive way to find the edges. Now I'll just go over very uh, briefly on how it works and everything, right? So we have this image, right? What it does with it first does grayscale, right? Converts it to black and white. You can write it yourself before. You can do Gaussian blur. The Gaussian blur function is what we saw in it. You can see it, the image is slightly blurred. This is sharper than you. Then you find gradient magnitude. Now, what is gradient? Gradient uh, mm -hmm. is nothing but difference in a specific direction. Like you have horizontal gradient. You have horizontal pixel differences. You find them, you get something like this. You vertical, you find them, you get vertical gradient. Now, OpenCV does it with the gradient in all directions kind of thing has a pretty complex mathematical derivation there. So it finds a green magnitude for you, right? It finds like this. Now here you can notice there are some thick lines and some thin lines, right? Now it does non-max separation. Non-max separation is a technique where you get rid of redundant edges. Like you have a thick edge here, you also have a thin edge, but generally prefer an edge to be thin, right? It will, if thick and thin are at the same place, it will take out the thick. So in this way, it will take out the thicker one. So you are supposed to be left with only a thin edges image. Now you have a lot of extra stuff. You have stuff that you want to remove. You have edges you want to take out. You have edges you want to keep. For that, you can do thresholding. Here you use two thresholds. Now how you use these two thresholds? That's a very famous thing. The initial part is same as what I explained. Now you calculate the gradient, right? In this step. Calculate the gradient and after non max separation, take out the non useful gradient, useless gradient. So, after you define two thresholds for this double thresholding, you have a max val threshold and your min val threshold. Now, all the gradients less than min val are useless, they are non relevant to the image, and all the gradients that are greater than max val are strong edges. The, those are the edges you want to keep, right? So, are the pixels that you say they are definitely an edge. Now, whatever there is in between there is something you're not sure of. You have to convert them either into strong, you want to sure of it, or you want to convert it into useless thing. You want to get rid of it. For that, you use this double thresholding technique. Suppose this is a part of image and gray represents the what is it, weak pixel, black represents the uh, non-relevant pixels and white represents the strong pixels. Okay, so here the gray pixel doesn't have any strong pixel around it, right? That is the technique that was proposed in Canny edge detection. The gray pixel doesn't have any pixel around it. So it is made a weak pixel. Now this gray pixel, but has a strong pixel around it, right? So this is made a strong pixel as well. So based on the neighborhood of the pixels, they are assigned some value. And in this way, double thresholding is done. So for it, so all this, all these steps that you have, everything is done under the open say hood, under the hood. So you don't have to worry about anything. You just have to sit back and just give image, have to give two thresholds, or it can't set the thresholds. So you just have to give two thresholds and it'll give you the edges. That's it. It does everything for you. Let me show you that. Right, so. Okay, suppose we have the same image, I have this Lena image. This is a very famous image in computer vision and image processing in the search bar. So you just, I'm just reading the image. I am setting the image as black and white, right? I'm telling it. So now I'm edging the images. I'm finding the edged image with two, with two thresholds, 30 over 200. See, these are the edges in the image. If you are not satisfied with these edges, you can just tune them, the threshold. Suppose I decrease the max square. Right, I decrease it to like 100. It classifies more threshold is strong, right? 
because if you decrease the Maxwell threshold, have a larger pixels which are directly classified strong. Now, if you increase it, have lesser pixels that classified strong, like that. So that was edge detection. Uh, edge detection. Edge detection has uh, really cool uh, applications. Like you have the CCTV footage, you can just use edge to better understand the image. Like this image is more clear than this to understand the car moving. And also clean up fingerprints, etc., et in order to understand the images using edge detection. Then you have corner detection. What is a corner now? Now, generally, how will a computer understand corner? Because you understand this a corner because you can just see the image directly. But computer doesn't have any eyes like that, so it has to it has to uh, do something with the numbers in order to understand. So it finds a region, it takes a small region and moves it along the image. I have this light brown thing, it moves it everywhere. Now in this region, you do you see the shifts in intensity. Suppose in this region, the computer is focusing here. You see that as it moves, as I move my pointer here, there is no change in the intensity anywhere, right? Everywhere is same. So it says the region is flat and it's definitely not a corner. Now suppose I see this region. I move the region a little and now I'm focusing. I see that when I move the cursor like this in one direction, there is no change. But I move it here. For some instant, there is a big change, right? There's a big change. So I say it's an edge because uh, in an edge, along the edge, there is no change, but other directions, it has a change. So it lies by design edge. But if, uh, if the region comes to corner, it can just uh, wherever direction you move, it has a big change, has a big change in density. So in this, we can say it has found a corner. So this is the basic principle. It uses some mathematics, basic mathematics, uh, they have provided in slides. You can always go to that. It basically just finds a shifted version from the original version and and uh, squared uh, takes the sum square difference of it and makes a function out of it. Now you just want to maximize this function. You just want to move it all over this image and find out where it is the biggest. And wherever it is the biggest, it's a corner. So it's a big function. You do use some linear algebra techniques to make a matrix. And then you find two values, lambda one and lambda two, using which you can classify this any as an edge or a corner or a flat region. You have you calculate an R score, right? With a matrix. Now, what was that matrix? You just go over this. Okay. So you get an R score in the matrix. And using the R score, you can classify. If mod R is very small, the region is considered to be flat. If R is negative and very large in magnitude, it is an edge, right? Like that. It's very easy to identify with that. Now, this all this mathematics can be easily done under the whole by OpenCV by uh, just one function corner added. It is inside the OpenCV. Just need to give the image. You need to give the block size, how big the region you want to consider. Then you give something called K size. It's a parameter of Sobel derivative. Sobel is, uh, is a technique to find gradients. This is again beyond the scope. So it's a way to find the gradients. We just search it. K is the free parameter in the equation, the parameter that you have here. Right. So that was one method of corner detection, but there are a lot of other corner detections as well. Like this one other method called Shitomasi corner detection. What it does, it calculates the lambda one and lambda two similarly, but it takes it, it, it considers the R of the thing. Right. Here the R is calculated using this formula: lambda one, lambda two minus k lambda one plus lambda two whole square. Right. Here it just does take a minimum of both of them. Now. It says that if R is greater than threshold, it should be classified as a corner directly. Now to implement this, uh, CV2 has a function called good features to track. It just finds the strongest corners in the image. Right? You, just now you understood it, what constitutes a corner. It's a good change. So something can be better corner, a huge change. Something can be a weak corner because it doesn't have much change. Something like that. So Shitomasi finds the strongest corner. So you can just give the image and give the number of corners that you want to select and give the quality, how bad, good corners you want. This is the Euclidean distance that you want to corners because it uh, it takes out the corners. If the two corners are very close, they're redundant, right? You don't want that because 
if you see this region, you shift this region just slightly this side, it will still have a lot of changes in all the directions. But you only want one, right? But you only want this. So if an event, if two regions are very close, it takes out the redundant ones for you. So for that, you need a minimum distance for that. So it finds the strongest corner like this. This is an example. Let us see this. Okay. Right. So again, I'm reading this image of chessboard. I'm converting it to gray. It finds a corner on the grayscale images. And this is the chessboard you have. Now this is the corner iris. You give the image. I uh, I take the two three. Now I also dilute it because corners are very small. It's just a single pixel. You need to increase the size a bit to understand what's happening. So you just dilute it. Dilute is opposite of um, it's just expanding the pixels. It just if a pixel is white in color, it will put all the neighboring pixels in white color, yeah. something like that. So these are all the corners that it detects. So for this image, I think it's it has detected very well these corners. Now it ha it might have some noisy corners as well. It might have by mistake detected a corner here too. So for mm -hmm. that, you filter it using a threshold. So you have the maximum corner value. You take the 0 0.01 part of or 0 0.01 of it. Now you say that if any point as greater than this value, only then make it a corner. Right. Only then make it a corner. So this is a BGR color, right? Red color. So you can you have said that only if the gradient is very dark, make it a corner. So this is a corner. Right now it detected corner pretty well because the values are tuned. You can uh, play with these values a bit to see how this prediction changes. So you can see that. Uh, it has detected corners very well, so it did not have much use, but this is a useful thing where you can just select a few corners. Now, once again, similarly, you have a Shikumazi corner detection. You have the read, I'm reading the image of chessboard again. I'm using good features track. I'll be detecting 50 corners with this quality and 10. And wherever I find the corner, I put a small circle on the image. Here. So, these are all the circles where and again play with these values and see that how the prediction changes okay so let's come to this part right phase detection phase detection is something yeah it's so uh, it has its income okay good features for traffic Here you go. It has the image. It has the number of corners that you want to detect. It again has the quality. You might have to tune it a bit. Sometimes it goes out of control. It is something you don't want. Chessboard is a very easy image. You have something hard image that you saw here. It's a very hard image. Here you have this. Uh, you can take this image from the internet and use that one in this one accessory. So you can take the small quality and you can also set the minimum. Is that all right? In just uh, all these things that I'm saying are uh, really, uh, pretty much available on the internet. The best thing I suggest to you is this. Um, so I thought I'll tell you well, but yeah. So you have this OpenZV Python tutorials from here. This is what I suggest to everyone who wants to study OpenZV, wants to learn what is an OpenZV. It has all the topics, like it tells you how to install it. It tells you the features that you have. For example, core operations that you have, like uh, basic operations and images. It has accessing and modifying pixel values. We did that, right? We took the pixel and modified it. We made an image of by us. You can do that. You can also see some image processing techniques. You can see the contours. You can see a full list of all the operations. You have contour features, the properties. Contours are very extensive study. And also hierarchy which I told, which is beyond the course you can study it from here as well. So this is something I suggest to everyone to just look up on. I'll put the link in the chat. Okay, this book market, whenever you have anything to uh, think about OpenCV you want to learn, just go to this. Or also OpenCV is a very popular library, popular library. So 
if you find an error you run into anything just search it somebody or the other might have definitely caught the thing before you right so phase detection where was that so phase detection is as the name sound is a very popular thing you have an image or a video wanted it phases out of it so open cv has a it uses a cascade based classifiers what is this cascade based classifiers thing what i'm talking about it basically you store you think how what is the phase for you you can identify human phase wherever you see but for a computer it's just numbers right it has to uh, make sense of what are these numbers and which numbers represent phase so for that it makes these features now what is this feature exactly you put suppose you have this why uh, you have this black and white thing you put it here near the eyes now you calculate a value you sum all the black pixels and you sum all the white pixels what do you mean like all the pixels under this white color you sum all of them now you take the total sum from black and you subtract the white sum from it. you get a number now that number is specific to the face the eyes part of the face and if you put a random place like you put somewhere here you won't get that value you might get something near to that but you won't get that value now that is that value is specific to human face you see some other face you can just calculate the value and if, if the value comes very near to it you can say it's a human face so that is the main basic logic that it uses it uses classifiers it also uses the machine learning apps as well which we can understand now it use, it saves all these values it keeps them in an xml file which you need to load while detecting faces you just create a cascade classifier you then detect the object have the scale factor like as i told it calculates this features how much of the image you want to calculate at one time so that is something in set that is also a, a value that you can tune to get better values okay so the phase detection right now the phase detection process is a part of an object detection part object detection is a method to detect objects in the image but right now we are detecting a specific phase of the image now detect phase for computers all the images are just numbers computers can't make sense out of them so it only understand numbers so you create features what are these features so something like this edge features you have some line features you have some rectangle features create thousands of these features now what do they do for example you have this you have this feature you have this black hole you put it on the face you sum all the black pixels all the pixels of the face under the black hole all the pixels of the face under the white hole then you subtract them you get a value right and you take another human face you do the same thing you put it on the eyes and uh, subtract them get a value now for you do that for thousands of human faces all the values you see they are somewhat related because you are doing it for human faces and for a specific feature so like that you for all the features you do the same thing you put the feature for the human face everywhere and in this way you find if it's a human face or not so i am explaining you in a very uh, basic way but you can always head on to here this object detection thing for the phase detection and cascade classifier it will explain you in depth how it's going on it creates some 6 16000 feet 160000 plus features it reduces that to 6000 and then creates a window and creates a many classifier so all these are all this is a lot for you right in just yeah pretty great. so uh, all this is all this might be too big right now so i suggest you take this slowly uh, just uh, know what is going on right now and then slowly go deep into that and that's how everyone learns right so you just give the image you give the how much of the to, to, uh, to look you give the neighbors right how many neighbors should have to read so once again as i said if you shift the face a little you still have human face but you but you don't want to detect it again so there is minimum number of neighbors a face might have, have that you want to specify specify so let us see that in action so you have this so i have these xml files i have stored it in a date and gaggle page you can access you can just access very easily we have this hr cascade frontal page default it's very popular thing like i can just search hr cascade github just search it on github 
played a lot of parts because every almost every open cv page detection project uses it uses this xml file it's a very popular file so you just load them you also have that for page you also have for i you can have for any object right you can also have for i so i'm just creating an image of elon musk i am converted to grayscale yeah again it only works for grayscale images This is the image of an Elon, Elon Musk. So you detect from the scale, you have some of these values that you can tune to get better. So I'm just detecting the face. I get the faces. Faces is a list of faces it detected. Now I'm just drawing a rectangle of the face. I have the top left corner X, Y and the bottom right corner. Bottom right corner, how can I get it? I can just take the origin and uh, add the width and height to it. Add the width. So I, in this way, I can draw the rectangle. Then I also detect the eyes from it. So this might be a pretty complex code for you. So this is eyes, size part. So I'm also drawing the rectangle on eyes. Here you go. So I have drawn, I have detected the face, I have detected the face of the enormous, and also I detect the eyes. So in this way again, detect anything. One more uh, pretty useful thing that you have in OpenCV is the mask segmentation. I told you like uh, how HSV values are very useful, right? You can find any color and what color does it represent by specifying the lower range of the color and upper range of the color. Let me directly show you here. What are you talking about? Say I'm bringing a random image, right? This is my this is an image of shapes. Suppose I want to uh, detect uh, the circle, a red color in so I define a low limit of the red in the HSV value and a high limit. So this is a minimum minimum values it can have. Minimum Q, minimum saturation, minimum value. And this is a maximum saturation, maximum Q, maximum value of the red color. Now I use a function called cv2.index. It basically takes the image, takes the low value, and takes the high value. Now, if, if the value, uh, HSV value, is in between this range, it puts the value 1. Otherwise, it puts zero. So in this way, you so you get all the red pixels in there. I'll show you. Here you go. So so these are the values I've chosen before. So chosen before. So I detect the red color. I have taken the minimum value of red and the minimum value maximum value of red. I just do in range and just put that. Again, you can have minimum for yellow, minimum maximum for yellow. And I detect the triangular then again i can have orange right now orange. now as i told you you can have uh you can detect polygons what polygon is it by approximating using approx poly dp also you can find the color like i showed you now here's a small uh practice where you can pretty easily do that how to detect the other uh shapes in the image like i want to take this you want to green you want some proper hsv values for that yeah, for that you can use this you can see how the hsv value varies. you can just see that and after that you can find you can draw contours on this what do you get in the contours you get this you get this shape and this whole image too you might get that and also you want to find what shape to contour draw the square or rectangle this is something i want you to search really it's a very useful thing you just search a proper dp detecting shape you'll get some depth this was this so uh this was the workshop now i want to show you some now I ju you just learned about uh what what are the functionalities of the open thing now i want to tell you what can you do with it some projects that you have right now this is a project that i made uh an year back uh called air painting this is me doing stuff just see for just see for a second what it does you'll understand So this is me and a year back. Everything is done in OpenCV. You can see I am literally drawing with uh, my hand. So on the image. So how am I doing it? This is going, this is telling you a little what's happening here. So you can see my hand, uh, my 
left hand has a yellow color yellow color so actually pen thing it's a clay yellow color clay and my right hand has a pink color paper wrapper now i detect yellow color image how do i detect yellow color like this this is how i detect yellow color. i just mask it i just define two values and take the image so in this way i find where is yellow color so i get the where am i holding this now i find the center of the contour you know i just showed you how you can find center right so now once i found the center i just need to change the color of the frame right appropriate color of the frame so i also told you how you can change the color of the frame just you need just need to change the pixel values once you know that an image is just numbers uh you have all the power in your hands you know what an image is you know you can do anything with it so the writing is for it you can uh, go to the data link it has all the code if you are looking for it so that is one very good project also one more project is this ai sudoku this is uh, something where i liked it very much so i thought i'll share it with you so this what it does uh, you have a sudoku right you have a sudoku you take an image it detects the sudoku itself and solves it for you right the very cool thing so you, it's a smart sudoku is always you just need to upload the image you need to find out the numbers here right you need to find this thing so for that you you do it black and white then you do blur blur the image a little you dilate just and do dilate means or making the object bigger yeah this is the image processing part you do a thresholding then you invert what is invert invert is just 0 to 1 when i like 0 to 1 and 1 to 0 you do dilating then you flat fill you fill the uh, remaining lines as called flat filling right you find the biggest biggest connected of the pixels fill lines and find the biggest connected of the pixels so that is it you are just left with the sudoku block and then erode to make it a little thin so dilation is the inverse process of erosion then there are some uh, high or uh, high plus techniques to find the lines and then you find in the end you find these points and then you just shear it. you just rotate it to get the final sudoku so in this way it's a very interesting project it's a high level project because once you for uh, beginners like you this might be too much but the story get there you'll get to the point like this might seem nothing so this is something i uh, made after uh, i learned open cv i explored it a lot i so what all it has i think it has uh, you can choose different colors and choose the thickness of the line as i told you just need to change the uh, thickness of the in the function so in this way when you put it there just change the thickness to have a start button to start the painting have the stop button you also have the save image it will save the current image i should that to you so the only is function is that and here they show the currently selected color so i put the head on save and it will save the image so i am opening the save This is the same. So this was the beginning project, and uh, as I said, for more you can always just refer this link. It is a very great link, as a useful link, as everything. You can also, uh, if you are looking for video tutorials, you can just Google programming knowledge, Open CV. Just Google that. It will give you a very great tutorial for beginners. the the basis for this tutorial is again these tutorial docs but if you're better if you're better with videos you can just all these so everyone whoever wants to learn open cv who approaches me i always suggest that you can just give open cv this is a big playlist for that thing i put the link in the chat so we are thing so uh, these are the more tutorials or uh, if you have any doubts you have any errors the notebook is with you the notebook will be public so if you have uh, you, you can always run it you can run it whenever you want so it's yours now once you copy it it's yours 
then yeah so so that was the workshop that i wanted to present to you i hope you have learned a bit from it please thank you for that um so guys if anyone want to ask any question you can just put it in the chat box Well, I'm happy that you learned from, it. and I'll share you the slides. I'll share the slides and the notebook and everything. And I'll report you whenever you want. Okay, so that was wonderful session, Varun sir, uh, and I'm pretty sure that all the attendees have gained a lot of knowledge from this. And uh, like it is always said, that all good things must come to an end. and uh, now uh, i parri agrawal would like to extend vote of thanks on the behalf of entire committee of uh, ieee ap shah institute of technology and we are truly grateful for your time and effort uh, and i'm sure that all have gained some insights and learned a lot about open cv computer vision we extend our gratitude towards ieee volunteers of both uh, san uh, francis uh, institute of technology and ap shah institute of technology for your hard work in making this event possible and all the volunteers uh, who were part of the skill up uh, september i would like to thank all of you guys and now i would like to thank our uh, our principal and branch counselor of apsit uh dr tam kolikar sir and our dean uh, of administration of apsit dr samin nani vadekar sir for guide uh, for guiding us to uh, host this amazing webinar and i would like to thank the issb coordinator of sfit santosh sir and issb coordinator of sfit valentina ma'am and uh, now i would like to uh, thank all the attendees for listening so patiently and uh, for actively participating in this session and even in all the three session of skill up september and now i would like to uh, request all the participants to please uh, fill the feedback form which is there in the chat box